This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Welcome to Body Count, a history podcast. Hello and welcome to Body Count, the podcast where we believe history doesn't repeat itself, it rhymes, and a proud member of the Big Heads Podcast Network. We're here to show you that you don't hate history, you just hate the way it was taught to you. Only rule when we choose a topic, someone or a lot of someone's died. <laughs> we give you the series of events in a narrative fashion and by the end correlate said story with current events. None of us here are PBS, Ken Burns, or Dan Carlin. So if you want that Hoover-esque, just the facts, ma'am, history podcast, we are not going to be for you. So there will be analysis, opinions, and this is not a lecture. Our opinions are our own. And know that uh, I am held verbally hostage. Direct your hate at uh, the host, folks, where it belongs. So it's said that uh, tragedy plus time equals comedy. So just know that we will giggle at some pretty occasionally rough subject matter. Okay? So we are not actively trying to offend anyone. You've been warned. So if you're up for all that, I am the co-host, Bethany Skelton, and of course, here with me, as always, is the lovely host with the most, Um, (laughs) (laughs) yes, special place today, really quickly, the gun and the bottom of the European <laughs> mountain, whatever else is going on it's, up here. But it's not it's a historical. statement, guys. I'm just in a very specific room that is entirely hunting themed with hunting decor. It's an antique gun. Don't worry. It's very, very old. I couldn't tell you how old. My mother is the, what do you call them? Antiquer, antiquist. Antiquist. Uh, ant- antiquist. Antiquer. But uh, oh. I'm going to say antiquist. I like antiquist better than antiquer. Antiquer. That just sounds weird. Right? It just and does. Honestly, I could start pulling shit off the walls <laughs> and it would just be like American you time could go on. You could go on the road show, antiques road show in that room. <laughs> no, it's got like a 1700s, like what you use to pull cotton balls through to like separate out the seeds <laughs> right now. I'm like a flax separator from the 1800s. This woman is, suffice to say, I'm not making an NRA statement or anything weird. No, no. weird. Please. Okay. Uh, and and if you are listening to this and not actually watching, go to our Patreon. You can see this exact same and hear this exact same uh <laughs> episode, but you get to see us. You get to see our faces and where we're at you and what we're doing. Us. Yes, <laughs> for free since we're all in hashtag quarantine. Yes, because we just Life want you weird. guys to, even though Life we can't true. see people, we want to see people in spirit. Yes. <laughs> A virtual hug. A virtual, A virtual hug. hug. <laughs> Which is warmer than I will ever be. Ever. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. As Mm -hmm. always, we've got a lot to get to today. First, Mm -hmm. housekeeping. We are part of the Big Heads Podcast Network. It's just a great collective of podcasts. Please go and check it out. We're always super excited about that. Hit them up on social media. You can go to bigheadsmedia.com, see all the podcasts there, including ourselves. You can buy our merchandise there, which I always forget that we have because we're terrible. I have a shirt. I have a shirt. I I, I just got my shirt. The other day, so Woo-hoo. you know what I'm Happy embarrassed about. I have all what? my favorite podcast shirts, but I do not own one of my own. That's okay because I don't listen to my own. Work. Why would I own my own merchandise? Um, <laughs> oh my gosh! If you love this show, please go give us five stars on iTunes, wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. We love what you guys say about us. It's not that we don't love feeling good, but you could also tell us like we're horrible B words and like piss off as long as you gave us those five stars. It really, really helps us out on the business end. So we always appreciate everybody that bothers to do that. And there aren't many of you, 
not compared to listener numbers. So please help us out. Um, yeah. That note, we were talking about Patreon earlier. We are getting back up and running. Well, all we're doing right now is trying to post our episodes, us doing them live together. We are just throwing those up for free. We went over all that. Um, yeah. And then we're going to be doing some other stuff when uh, the pandemic ends, whenever that may be. <laughs> Uh, literally i we have an idea but at the same time we don't so um yeah that's where we're at i think that's where we're all at so i think it's very understandable right try scheduling uh, it during this mess oh my gosh my, my you're, basic, my you're not problem. essential you're not essential right now, Jessica. Just understand that, okay? Yeah. You're not essential. <laughs> I'm not essential. Let me tell you, I would give all that I own for a good waxing right now. Um, Amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> this shape is for the birds, y'all. But we keep you updated on everything that we yeah. do on social media, and we also post these Patreon things on there, so be sure to yeah. follow us there. Um Next week, my plan is to finish up with Peter. Hopefully, we can get our guest on for that. Okay. I mean, I really hope so, because otherwise, I won't be able to pronounce a good, you know, three quarters of things that I've been <laughs> <Of> the word. <laughs> word. So, Don't look at me. Maybe. Don't look at me. We all know I cannot help you out in that department. So, <laughs> my grasp of Slavic languages is so poor. It just so hey, happens. You're still better than me, girl. You said better than me. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, my our guests will be able to get on. If not, um, we'll just plan yeah, we'll it figure it out. Week, but I sidetracked myself somewhere in the Ottoman Empire, and then I got lost in Sweden and Poland and the War of Spanish Succession. You're coming just, back. You're coming back around. You're coming back around. I'm it's coming okay. Coming back around, <laughs> Peter. I'm coming back around. All this shit that you're here, going here at body. Here at Body Count, we don't discriminate. Discriminate. We go around the world. Okay, we just we go do. around the okay? world. Then we come back to our subject. We come back. We come back. We come back. But because I'm lazy and have no <laughs> that's what it is. Just so we all know what the problem. Everybody is. swear <laughs> between me and my therapist. Um. So in this we podcast, want to do <laughs> another podcast in and of itself. I need to be a guest on a couple. Um, <laughs> we do want to get to Nancy Wake eventually, Ooh. but God knows. Um, so this week, basically what I'm trying to say, I didn't get my shiz together in time. Okay. I just didn't it get my shit together. Is. And it is what it is. I'm reading books. I'm being weird. I mean, this That's is all we really, can do. It's like the entire has embraced my lifestyle all at once and I've gone <laughs> full fledged like through the looking glass weird with it right? hey if you're gonna my, go weird go weird point is I didn't get it together so what we're going to do this week is something a little different it's gonna be a short story what we're doing this week is another fun one it's gonna be another one off it's a weird story it is what it is um, so what is our body count today? We haven't had one with a tangible body count in quite some time. But it's been it's been a while. I mean, well, mine had one, but it was kind of a guesstimate just because they couldn't find everybody's remains. So we've had a lot of guesstimates. Yeah, it was a guess. The life and times of Winston Churchill, um, nuclear bombs, all of Mount Everest. Like, let's let's boil it down. So. This week, we've got around 300 men, which is rough, but uh, 300 men, Bethany, and also, ultimately, three pigeons. So, 300 men and uh, three pigeons. I was kind of, I was really into the 300 men, and then now I'm intrigued by the three pigeons. Like, you reeled me in, and then with the three pigeons, now I'm like, so what? I know. And understandably, <laughs> you are thinking, what the hell do pigeons have to do with this? Why do I care about these pigeons? You're going to care so much about these pigeons by the time I'm done. It's ridiculous. Okay. Okay. Because I don't really like, I'm not a pigeon fan. Oh, you're going to be a fan of this pigeon. You're going to be like this pigeon. This bird. So this, this bird. This <laughs> 
prepared. <laughs> this week, we are telling the story of the Lost Battalion, um, which is actually the story of Cherami, Hero Bird. That's what I'm going to title this, guys. I've said it for once, my actual title. Cherami, Hero Bird. Um, and again, I know you have questions because WTF, Jessica, you need to get out I've of I've never heard I've never heard of this. I am not familiar with this, so I'm excited to learn more. Yeah. I understand you have bird related questions. Who wouldn't in this case? I, mean, um, I don't really have bird related questions, but I do have questions. <laughs> right? We don't do animal body count theory. No. But this story is random. Um, and really quickly, I'm just going to say it right now. I'm going to shout them out because uh, this story is for Kara and Leah. But especially Kara, because <laughs> we talk a lot about this hero pigeon, a lot. Um, so, Bethany, are you ready to hear the story of Cherami and the Lost Battalion? Yes, I sure am. So, we're going to pop on back to October 1918. Major Charles Whittlesey and his men are ordered to creep on the German position in the Argonne Forest. So, uh, creep our like. Yeah. Creep it. They're like most <laughs> definitely not going to just chill in, in northern France, right? Like oh, they, they're okay. gonna do what they gotta do. They're they okay. gotta go with the Germans. So okay. to be more accurate, the major and his men are about to undertake the largest operation yet by the American Expeditionary Force in World War One. Okay. World War One. So World War One. All right. serving in the seventy seventh division. Which was like a ragtag bunch of dudes known as the mm -hmm. Metropolitan. Now, this is okay. a really cool group, um, and they're named as a reference to kind of their roots. So the okay. Metropolitan has been drawn from New York's awesomely multi ethnic Lower East Side. Um, so between them all, they still I can resist. I can resist. Sorry, keep going. How's that? Don't roll your eyes at me. Don't roll your eyes at me. You said it. It was there. You just don't realize it's part of a song. It went a full rotation. I can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it worked in mysterious ways. Um, so, like, between all these guys, they mm -hmm. spoke 40 plus languages. That oh, how wow. this group is. It's kind of crazy. Oh, wow. So, that's crazy. Yeah. Right. So now, linguistically, they may have had um, a leg up on most of the world, okay. but um, didn't necessarily make up for their lack of overall military experience. So they knew um, what they were doing, basically, when it came down to that. They knew what they were doing. Well, yes? They, no. they, they didn't. We're going to... Uh, they played uh -huh. very hard and fast during an mm. intense out of like basic training at Camp Upton in New York, um, but okay. they were immediately needed in France, and so oh, some okay. of these guys didn't even have time Oops. to learn like how to throw a grenade properly. <laughs> That's kind of important, <laughs> just, just, and, just slightly. We're about to march through. Well, Ugh. we're gonna get to what the argon <laughs> means. We're gonna get to it. Okay. So, all in all. Okay. He found himself in command of 554 soldiers. And, of course, some oh, okay. didn't know how to chunk grenades necessarily, sure. Oh, but yeah, they yeah. were going to attack the German front line. Oh, uh, um, okay. Well, hey, hey, if you don't know how to do it, just go for it. And, you know, fake it till you make it. <laughs> fake it till you make it. And that's what I said. Take some serious to do because um, this was no easy task. No. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> The strength of the German force in the area was nothing mm -hmm. to scoff at. If you uh, well, we're talking about Germans trip. here. <laughs> we're talking about Germans you know, here. They're very disciplined people. I apologize, Germany. That is not a crack at you guys. We love no, you. It's just the truth. Like we are not gonna dis. We're not disgracing you actually at all. Like. You don't, they the, at this point, at they are the not something to laugh intense, at. From one intense people group to another. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Please know we mean this with great respect. <laughs> great respect and right. much love. Please don't <laughs> add us. <laughs> Hashtag we love you. <laughs> it's gonna be my there we go. All right, guys. Um, 
But if attacking the Germans wasn't a daunting enough task, mm-hmm. let's consider where exactly they planned on locking horns with the Germans. Now, that mm-hmm. is the Argonne, the Argonne Forest. Oh, now, okay. For those of you unfamiliar with the Argonne, it's kind of a bitch of a <laughs> place to play Halo Imperial German Edition. Okay? Like, that's not where you want the setting to be for what you're about to do. Oh, okay. Not- Okay, so I, I'm it, not very. Hold on, I'm not very familiar with. I mean, I know what. Hey, I, those are video games. Pretty violent, right? Violent video games. Yes. Okay, so I, I mean, I'm. I'm just. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I'm trying. I, we'll to call it. We'll call it Call of Duty Imperial German Edition. Either way, it works. Um, I'm still talking so, video games, but that's okay. That, that's all right. <laughs> Basically, all you need to understand okay. about the Argon is it's all these like insanely deep ravines, right? And then okay. these ridiculously high bluffs above them that are just all rock outcrops. And that okay. is basically what you're kicking around in the Argon and the Argon Forest. So it's okay. like 200 feet down, 200 feet up. So imagine trying to cross that chasing Imperial Germany. It's not fun no, for anybody. No, no thanks. I, I'm out. I'll pass. Can I can I take a pass? Can I go to the next round? Right. <laughs> can I can um, can that be my free pass? <laughs> I'm gonna need to phone a friend. A friend. <laughs> and God work. help me, it's 1918, so airstrikes are not super. Can I get the audiences? Uh, can I get the audiences uh, opinion, please? Uh, Mock in your scores, audience. Can we poll on this? Can we Um, discuss this? Can we discuss it? Um, Basically, (laughs) it's an insanely easy place to defend Mm -hmm. and the worst place in the world to attack. Of course. Um, Of course. Let's just say Whittlesley knew what he was in for, but uh, orders is orders. So what you going to do, right? Well, yeah. Um, Totem pole when you're on that level of the totem pole, and even though you know you got to just do what you're told, period. You got to do what you're told. It's wartime, Suck. man. Um, Suck. so on the 2nd of October, Whittlesley and his BA bros move mm-hmm. out, and it just so happens they're super good at hopping and skipping their way through the ravines. They're of like the monkeys, yes, yeah. like spider monkeys. But that's also where the trouble kind of begins because the allied units on their flanks uh, could move as quickly as what Whittlesey's men could. And they Uh soon found themselves in the worst position you could ever be in when you're knocking on Germany's door. (laughs) Knock, 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 knocking on Germany's door. (laughs) (laughs) I want to do it. It's never fun for anybody in all of human history. Um, I would not they, recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it. And I definitely wouldn't recommend it in the position they're in because they're cut off, right? So they've yeah. outflanked all of the other folks. Yeah, I'm your own. Behind yeah. them. Are you and, all alone? Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, Germany, you start lobbing some grenades, going crazy, and you're like, wait a minute, where the hell is everybody? <laughs> where is everybody go? Oh, shit. Where's my, where's my bros at? Oh, it's just oh. me. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. I'm going to die. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to die. I'm going to die right now. <laughs> I'm going to die. Yeah, because they made the classic <laughs> mistake. They advanced too fast. Tacky. And, um, they got tacky. When- yeah, attacky, attacky. So when the German counterattack eventually mm-hmm. did come, it was a real Debbie Downer. Let me put it that way. I mean, like oh. outright devastating for well, these yeah. poor guys. You know, all 500 what a of let them. down. <laughs> they were like, yeah, we're winning. Oh, shit, we're captured. <laughs> we were moving so fast. If we were doing we're so so good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you and I automatically assume that soldiers just say, we were doing so good. Damn it. Like, I just don't understand. Like, I did everything right, and I still lost. And I still lost. I don't like, this is Jessica! 
Jessica. Um, <laughs> I can't remember. Are hidden up in the high rocky bluffs, like firing straight down on Whittlesey's guys, and they're now yeah. very exposed position, right? So yeah, they are. Guys. Yeah, they're picking these guys off at like dire insane. Well, they're exposed, so yeah. <laughs> they're and at the bottom of a ravine, off. at the mercy of German snipers, basically. So they couldn't even fire back to stop them because these guys, like I said, are some two hundred feet above them, and any attempt to retreat is like equally as impossible, if not downright suicidal. Like, where you, I mean, it's like where are you gonna go? It's like where are you gonna go? Like seriously, where like you can't go up, you can't go down, you can't go out, you can't go in. So exactly. they basically like, are. Where you gonna yeah. go? Um, so these guys were not in a great way by any means. Um, no. But y- exactly like you said, if they had come out, they would have absolutely been mown down by German machine guns at any mm-hmm. retreat. So they are stuck there. Um, so the only option, not a super great one, but there's no help for it. They're just going to have to sit tight and wait for reinforcement. Just spray and pray yeah. every once in a while. You know? <laughs> Pray and pray. <laughs> wow, that I shouldn't. Well, wow, that laugh didn't actually feel good. That felt really close it to felt home. It felt a little good. <laughs> it did, and then I realized what I was laughing about was real life, and so it kind of hit a little hard there. <laughs> I mean, isn't that every week on this show? Yes, it is. It's a nice <laughs> dose of reality. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious! Oh wait. This um, is real life. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> well, you're about to go a little further down the old rabbit hole because it gets worse, Ashley. Okay. Oh, so fun. That's... Why, the not? The... Why not? Why not? Why um, not? Their position at the bottom of the gorge rendered their wireless equipment less than useless. Mm. So now they can't even like radio out for help, right? They're so literally we'll like see... sitting ducks. Like, yep. like, like, just, literally just sitting there hoping that they survive, even just, though they're even though ratio. The aerial machine. Jesus. Yeah. I well, almost, honestly, Jessica, I would almost rather be like, you know what? I've had enough. Today's my day. I decide. I'm going to step in front and just die. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's too extreme. But what would you do in that situation? You're just going to wait it out and hopefully survive? Oh, but Bethany, there's a little I'm hope. Curious. Are Is you, it are really? Because I'm you feeling know? lost, like, right now. I'm feeling oh, hopeless. I wanted, I'm like, I dude, to what the hell? I you so far down the hole that you're just like, what? So that when our hero... When our hero arrives, you're going to be like, what the hell? Because I want uh, you to get invested. <laughs> I want you to get as invested as I was. I literally am at the point where I'm like, why are these people even staying in this hole of death? Just if it's coming, why avoid the inevitable? Just step out and say, I forgive, forgive me of my sins and take me. I would just screw blood. You're gonna step out and make (laughs) the (laughs) sin. I thought I, I literally am like, what are we living for right now, Jessica? What have you taken me? I hate you right now. Thank you, okay. 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 So, okay. Oh, God. He takes the head count and he finds out he's down already like 300 something men. And remember, they only oh. had 500. So oh, like 200. Group to 200. Begin with. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when 300 of your men have already been killed, desperate times call for desperate measures, right? Right, right. Bethany, enter our hero. Is it a bird? Yes. (laughs) Is it a plane? No, but it's definitely a bird. Not (laughs) not Superman. So it is a bird. Yes. Your first guess was right. Yes, it was a bird. (laughs) How did you know? (laughs) <laughs> not just any old bird <laughs> not just any old bird what kind of bird wings a pigeon, a pigeon. A pigeon to I end hate pigeons, pigeons. Ah. now Whittlesey may not have had or Whittlesley I think is 
how about I say it correctly? There we go. Whittlesley may not have had working wireless equipment, right? And we did mm -hmm. have three carrier pigeons. No shit. Interesting. But okay. So I'm make the game of the history of carrier pigeons. <laughs> Oh, it was a thing. Okay, don't ask me questions about carrier because that's a whole different podcast, Bethany. I'm just trying to talk about one carrier. Pigeon. I know it just one. makes games Game of Thrones. And again, if you have not watched Game of Thrones on HBO, you should, except for season eight. <laughs> but if you do, you will. I never thought that the pigeon thing was actually real, but apparently, oh, yes, absolutely, it was. <laughs> it was. It was Oh, I would have never thought that ever. I thought that was just a fake book fictional. Nope. Fake. Very common practice. <laughs> many years. Okay, cool. I'll teach you all about the history of carrier pigeons and war and, and birds and war at a later date. Um, so basically, what I'm trying to say is it is literally in this ravine down to a wing and a prayer at this point. Right? It's a wing and a prayer. Not a wing and a prayer. And, a prayer. and I, I know that I'm for real, if you think about it. Oh, I just I, got I, it. I, I just got it. I got it. If you think yeah, about it. A wing and a prayer. <laughs> they're in the, they're in the dust. Sorry, my husband's close to the window. <laughs> I'm like, do you get it, babe? No, he doesn't get it. He doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> but she really can only hear about, your side of it. He's in a, they're in a death hole, <laughs> okay? They can no way out. <laughs> so they literally have to just hope on a prayer on this wing that flies. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. They got to know their way I out can't. of it. I can't. <laughs> oh, like they got a Noah in their uh, in the ark, their way out maybe of it. That so maybe the song's inspiration comes from living on a prayer, <laughs> a wing oh, on a prayer. prayer. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my okay. god! I can't. The first message. First message. He attempts to send many wounded. We cannot evacuate. Wait. How is he riding on something? He's in a hole. Well, they're in a ravine. They've taken cover under the trees and bushes and rocks in the bottom of it. But they can't, like, be moving around or they're going to get, like, picked off. But, yeah, he's sitting there scribbling this message. So he rolls it up, puts it in the little pigeon's carrier deal. Let's loose the first pigeon, right? But Which what is, is he riding on? What is he riding on? What, a leash? No, paper. They have their supplies that they had on them. <laughs> this is a wild pigeon. Call. They, they bring these carrier pigeons with them in cages. Okay. The express purpose of sending messages. Remember, this is 1918, not 1940. We're in the First World War. Oh, no, I get, I get that. I just honestly... I'm I'm being very honest. Like I'm like, how is he writing on something? Like, where is he getting paper? Where is he getting the ink? Like, did he, he write in bed? Please send SOS. Send help. Like, I don't. I don't. Yeah, he had he him had, on his person, probably tucked in the pockets in case he had to send a message. I on the carrier pigeon. You're right. Of course, you have the answer to everything. Well, I mean, they are in a war. They didn't just wander out into the Argonne one day and go, I'm going to go find Germany. <laughs> I'll on me right before I hit Berlin. <laughs> and I can't do it. I'll watch me. I'll do it on my own. Straight into the Kaiser's palace. Let him yeah. slap him. <laughs> slap. <laughs> slap, 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 slap. <laughs> slap. So, uh, many wounded, okay. cannot evacuate, rolls it up, puts it okay. in a little pigeon's deal on its leg, lets the pigeon loose, and the pigeon is immediately murdered. <laughs> and cold, pigeony blood by the I, don't, I didn't mean to laugh, but damn. This yeah. pigeon. What the pigeon do to you? <laughs> Found and determined not to allow this group to be rescued by the other allies or the mm -hmm. Americans. And 
again, smart. It was a common practice at the time. So any bird they see flying out of the position, Ooh. they're going to shoot down because it's more than likely carrying a message. message. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so Major Whittlesley then sends message number two. Okay. Men are suffering. Can support be sent? Releases the bird and the second feathery hero shot down by these dastardly bluff snipers. Did he not learn from the first pigeon? Right? Try to send a night pigeon, bro. Like, I know. Or, or paint the pigeon black. I don't know. And then send it at night. I don't know. Put the pigeon in mud and then release it at night. I mean, these are all, but, you know, they already Apparently, have everybody that was, I mean, again, than everybody else, isn't whatever. at the top of what these guys did. Um, and I'm sure it was, you know, it's not like back to back. You didn't just go bird number one, bird number two. <laughs> but again, you know, like you after waited a, a few little days. time. Yeah. <laughs> did a few days between Three pigeons. Two hours. Um, <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I also want to say that I like I know they killed 300 men yes. um, and I want to highlight all the human death um, which is definitely more important than the bird death but a lot more humans than the bird pigeons just like got to me <laughs> don't get me wrong I know that 300 <laughs> men is way worse I was kind of curious like wait why am I worked up about pigeons? Why are we talking about pigeons? Didn't like 300 people die? Like, yeah, what? But I got caught up in the pigeons. But so you know, did I. I can watch like a whole movie, <laughs> a grandma, and like the whole family can pigeons. die. And I never bat an eye, but like a dog or a cat dies, and I'm like, this movie, I. <laughs> this movie. Yeah. Fuck this movie. <laughs> never like, again. I'm never again. Resonated so deeply with me because they killed that dog and I went ballistic like real time with John Wick. I, remember, I, I don't. Same thing. <laughs> I would have done the same thing. I don't blame you. You and your whole family. I still, <laughs> honestly, I still don't understand how I got through the Lion King when I did at that age. I still don't understand it. The, right? I mean, I don't. I don't understand how I physically that and emotionally. And animals. Animal dad death. A dad, an, a dad animal. Like, really? A dad animal death. Wow. A dad no. animal death. Basically, I realized 300 men also died. It wasn't a great day for man or bird oh. alike. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, you had a ratio. Every 100 men, a bird died. So we have one pigeon left. And our ragtag group of badasses, last shot. At rescue rests on the wings of a single bird. Bomb, uh, bomb, bomb. Uh, I can't uh, resist. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. freaking bird, right? Like, oh, wow. Enter, like, uh, enter he, he, brought it from, he brought it from an egg to, and he hatched it with his own ass because he sat on it and nurtured it. <laughs> this is a present bird, but we're not going to get into the history of Jeremy. <laughs> Sorry, I can Enter. Enter. The Jeremy Pigeon Extraordinaire. The pigeon that has all pigeons. It's like the Beyonce. It's like the Beyonce of pigeons. The Beyonce in Beyonce pigeon. <laughs> it actually does right. something. It doesn't just. It, it has a function. So, it does um, it all. It does it all. <laughs> it does it all. Uh, triple threat bird. Really true. So, <laughs> if a message needed to get through before, it really, really needed to get through this time, as not only right. are the guys now under German fire, the American artillery is now on the ball, but it meant that our metropolitans are in this bottom of this ravine, also taking friendly fire at this point. So they are getting American and German fire. Fun. <laughs> what a great time to be a soldier. <laughs> Sign me up, Scotty. Sign me up, America. 
Um, so the last message, the one that's going to be attached, says, we are along the road parallel to 276.4. Our own artillery is dropping a barrage directly on us. For heaven's sake, stop it. <laughs> we're down here. Hey, I know there's only like 200 of us, but we're down here. Don't forget about us. I love oh. how polite it is. And for heaven's sake, stop Thanks. it. Please no. stop. <laughs> Not like any cuss words at all. At all. <laughs> for I would be sake. full of. I would we're not full say of. for heaven's sake, please stop bombing. We're down here. That's oh, not. God. For heaven's sake, stop it. Stop. Listen yeah. here, mother. Right. Here we get That's, real, that real would, fast. That would be my real, 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 real fast. fast. <laughs> so, put the message, roll the mm-hmm. message, puts it in the canister, and attaches it to Sheremy's leg. So, like, American butts are so puckered right now as they watch <laughs> this last bird. They're watching Jeremy. Their <laughs> last, finger. Right, their get out, last get out. Don't get shot down. Don't get shot down. Don't do it. Last <laughs> hope of rescue is flying out of the ravine, right? So, yeah. our little pigeon gal, and I think it was a girl. I've heard it both ways, but I'm pretty sure it was a girl pigeon. <laughs> barely get was barely above the tree okay. line when German gunners let loose oh. on the little <gasps> men. Oh no. Oh no. Right? So with oh, the first no. burst of fire, all weapons are immediately turned on Jeremy, who continued valiantly through this hail of bullets. Then, boom. Jeremy is hit and seen dropping in a very downward direction. Now, mm. as you can imagine... Mm-hmm. Major Whittlesley and his men are devastated because they think, oh, yeah. well, I'm definitely going to die in this shithole. That's okay, it. so now, now it makes sense to come up with what I had said before about like, well, what's another day? Just walk out and say, I take it. Kill oh, me now. Kill me now. Whatever. All pigeons are gone. <laughs> but are they, Bethany? Are they? Because no, the mess with my stops. emotions. I'm messing with your emotions. Gunfire stops. The Germans cease firing. And then you must have been able to hear, like, hear the collective gasp of disbelief because Jeremy, the pigeon of pigeons, could be seen struggling back into the air just in time to escape the ravine alive, looking ass toward divisional headquarters. Shut this up. Bird is a goddamn American hero, Bethany. <laughs> it got shot <laughs> down and it said, no, they need me. And it fought. Right, Bird's Damn so it. smarter maybe than we give them credit for. Tiny little velociraptors. Tiny little vo- clever girl. Ha-ha. <laughs> clever girl. Wow. wow. So Now I get it. Me. Now I get it. Okay. Now you get it. Share yeah. me. Made it to divisional headquarters 65 minutes later despite all odds because bleeding the whole way like yeah our i'm gonna make pretty it bad, shape. bad shape bad um, shape oh when God. they went looking for Sheremy's message it was discovered our poor little fellow lady you know whatever had been mm-hmm. shot through the breast and was blind in one eye one of the legs, the one carrying the message, is dangling by a tendon. No kidding. So our poor little hero bird, right? Like, poor bird, but Jeremy is successful in delivering the message. Oh, I know. I told you. Oh, my God. I told Are you, you kidding you me? Cry. No, I told you we're going to want to cry. Right now face right now this is insane how is that even possible i was writing this so yeah i know i know division headquarters i know headquarters orders an immediately or an immediate halt on all friendly fire um which is good is our heroes back in the ravine would actually have to hold out another four days before the relief force arrived They've been there so long already. Yeah. Oh, so my God. Upon, upon arrival, the Germans retreated, 
and Whittlesley's Lost Battalion. That's how fucked these guys were. Because they were, like, already calling this the Lost Battalion. We're yeah. finally safe. <sighs> Whittlesley returned to America, a bona fide hero. And the stand at the Argonne, of course, became the shit of legend. And, I'm like... Uh, I'm like Devin's here. Like, like, oh my God, God, this never happens. This never happens on Body Count. I was crying yesterday because I'm like, this bitch is a goddamn hero, like, singing Rock Flag and singing Rock Flag and Eagle from like Charlie (laughs) Kelly's version. And uh, what the hell is that show? It's always funny. Funny. That's like, I got so pumped up by this story. I love this story. Yeah, oh my I was crying. Um, but no shot one through the not. breast, Th- shot through the heart, and he's okay. <laughs> he flew with a broken tendon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dang, okay. Well, I know, I know. And wow, because that, That's a no one story. forgets. Yeah. No one forgets our little Cherami, who also became a name. national hero. Um, he, she, What's the name of a of... pigeon. You're telling me that Cherami is the name of a pigeon. Yeah. The pigeon. <laughs> the the pigeon. pigeon. Sorry, 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 sorry. The pigeon. The pigeon. The pigeon. Okay. Okay. The pigeon. Wow. So, national hero, he, oh, she, that. whatever, becomes one of six hundred pigeons in the bird employee of the United States Army Signal Corps and on top of the shit that this bird managed to pull in this uh, Aragon run, this pigeon had already delivered 12 important messages at Verdun. This is a hero pigeon! Oh if, my god! Like, if they had sent this bird into Iraq first, like, they would have known there were no WMDs. This pigeon <laughs> would have done it. <laughs> You know what's funny is there's actually a movie out right now, and we watched it. it Are we it, both crying over this pigeon right now? Yes, <laughs> I'm crying. It's a movie, and it's got Will Smith, and he's a spy, and he gets turned into a pigeon. And a spy in disguise? Something like that. It's new. Anyway, it's actually very illuminating, and I don't know why, but like that movie's coming to light. And I was like imagining Will Smith, the pigeon... Being the one that just fought through it. And I just like, I was like, oh my God, I've seen this movie. All right, let me tell you. Will Smith <laughs> oh. holds this pigeon's feather jock strap, okay? Like, period. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh. Shut up, Jessica. Shut up. Why do you <laughs> gotta always ruin my moment? <laughs> oh. The rescue of the infamous oh. battalion was, of yes. course, this hero bird's finest hour. Sure, was so damaged that it had to be amputated. So, what oh. do they do? They make it a tiny wooden leg. <laughs> no shit. I don't I mean, how cute that. is that? What I does mean, obviously, it Obviously, I would rather the bird, like, have its leg, but I'm pretty sure that human vets today have a difficulty in getting prosthetics, and they, like, made this bird a wooden leg. It's like pirate times. <laughs> Give the bird a wooden leg. <laughs> like, army doctors resuscitated and put this bird back together and gave it a wooden leg because it's like a hero bird. I know. We're both it lives. It lives. I'm gonna cry. It lives. It lives. Um. So then, our little pal went home to America after personally being seen off by General John J. Perishing. Now, upon arrival, Sheremy receives like a butt ton of medals. For his service, for a bird. And became, yeah, and became like a super member of the Racing Pigeon Hall of Fame. No shit, but he deserves a medal more than this pigeon. Bethany. I mean, I get it, I get it, and how, and you can tell the pigeon apart from all the other pigeons because it has a wooden leg. <laughs> I'm sorry, it stands I mean, out. It does. It really does. And you know what? Well deserved. 
well deserved standout for this weekend. It deserves, it deserves all mm. the all the amen mm-hmm. shit that it got. So <laughs> Jeremy died on June thirteenth, nineteen nineteen. So a little less than a year after Argon. Um, mm due to complications from wounds received in battle. So it eventually gets our little birdie hero. Um, That's still a long time. Dude, even also, died a feathery hero. He right. died a feathery hero. He actually, he did, yeah, he didn't die from something else. He died from the actual wounds he received from what it was, or she, sorry, we can call it it, he, or the bird, the pigeon. Jeremy died from the actual wounds that it fought for and that's heroic even a year later he was this bird is like no i refuse i refuse i'm gonna get my medal i'm gonna get into the hall of fame i'm gonna be the bird of birds (laughs) like i'm done i'm done done. i'm done with this i'm done with this this stupid podcast no i'm kidding i'm just over (laughs) 300 people, but we have been visibly weeping over this pigeon. So, Jeremy is stuffed and was put on uh, display in the Smithsonian, where it remains to this oh, wow. day. I didn't yep. know that. That is insane. You can go there. You can see Jeremy. Um, it's a bucket list, okay? I guess. Right? Yeah. So, I'll so it there one just, we'll just, next time you're at my house, we'll just go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not at my house, but next time, no. you know, if I ever return to my house, if we ever get to return to normal. <laughs> what is normal? What is we'll that? Up. What and is we'll that? Word? What is this word? What is this place? Normal? I will have uh-huh. none of this. So <laughs> that concludes our oh, God. third story. So 300 men and three pigeons, ultimately, because Sherry did die this. of her battle wounds. I feel I, like it, it definitely was more about the pigeon than the people, because I don't feel like the people did anything except for except for the person, the the guy that refused to give up on his pigeons. That's a hero too. The pit he believed in his pigeons so much that the pigeon believed in him. That's true ownership. That's true pet ownership. And that's what it's all about. That's the moral of the story. <laughs> I don't think that's the moral. Of the no, story. it's not. Moral it's not. Is. I just Bethany and Jessica will cry job. over a single bird. <laughs> <laughs> Bethany and Jessica will cry over a bird and apparently never bat an eye over three hundred human lives. Um, no, what this did they? One, do? They didn't risk their one, lives in messages. So <laughs> this one didn't have a, any correlation. <laughs> Current events, obviously. I said no, it was a fun sorry. one and a dumb yeah, one. No. Um, really, what this week was about was, Kara, this is all for you, because I wanted to talk about hero pigeons. Specifically. Thank you, Kara. And Leah. So thank you, and Kara, Kara, for always telling yeah. us about Jeremy the hero pigeon. Um, Being history right, beyond then. the scope. It, it's it's yeah, history it's beyond good. the scope. <laughs> Like I said, There's next true week, heroes. <laughs> next week we will have a practical application episode and everything. I just love this story and I wanted to tell it and I wanted everybody to watch me publicly cry over a pigeon. So well, remember, yeah. guys, if you're listening to this, you can go and watch us do it live on our Patreon. Yeah. Um, really quickly, I'm pushing this again this week. I want everybody to please go and check out Time Travel Talks on twitter at time travel talks hashtag time travel talks um they're always kind enough to promote us and we have a great time every couple weeks you know participating in those chats whether you know a lot whether you know a little there's something if you love history for everybody there everybody participates it's a lot of fun we would love to see more of our listeners come and join us there I feel like the redheaded stepchild when I go to time travel talks. They're so nice to me, but I'm like, I don't get it, but I'm here to learn. And they're so like, good job, Bethany. I'm like, yeah, I fit in. <laughs> I learned so you I the love first you. word today. <laughs> I, I learned something. You guys are awesome. I learned. I and, learned. And, Kara, and Kara especially is like, you get a gold star, Bethany. And I'm like, 
<laughs> Yay, thank you. <laughs> Unlike you who rolls their eyes at me. I don't know why I do a podcast with you. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I don't either. <laughs> I do. I love I, you, Jay. I hold you. This is why I hold you verbally I hostage. Hold you. you are mean to me, but I, I love you for it. <sighs> <laughs> it was a short one it was a fun yeah. one it was a weird yes. one absolutely. And we had absolutely no practical application it was a <laughs> we're bored af inside as is pigeon and i wanted to tell pigeon. bethany about this pigeon when you told me this jessica i was like what the hell we're talking about a pigeon and you're like just 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 wait and i'm like okay i'm gonna wait but a pigeon and now i get it i'm with you i cried i cried with you i cried with i cried yeah i cried about this pigeon yep, i told we you did. to get pigeon real Shem. and what a name you Shem. take away uh you take away a me and you get share if right. i could turn back time whoa whoa, whoa. <laughs> 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 so i i love it i was not expecting this story to get to me it pulled on my heartstrings and i learned something from this don't ever give up even when you've been shot through the breast and your ankle is hanging by a tendent fly wing in a prayer a wing in a prayer can save an entire life in a prayer guys. <laughs> moral of the story <laughs> there you go. moral of our story so guys we're back we're focused i'm gonna put these up on social media sure. where you can definitely hop over to patreon you can watch it it will be available on monday to listen to wherever you do podcasts we're there every monday please don't no forget pause to review um you can follow the show First off, mm -hmm. if you, you don't you do not do listening platforms specifically to listen to the show, you can jump over to bodycounthistorypod.com. All of our episodes are available right there. So much fun. You can also follow us on, well, you can also go to bigheadsmedia.com on our landing page there. That's and where you can buy our merchandise. History. Yeah, it's through the it's history in categories. Tab. You, you, you can go there, but it's through categories and you have to go through history. And then we are associated with a few others in the history category. There's not many of us, so we're, we're easy to find and just click on us. And if you go to the bottom, it shows, sorry, I didn't mean to take over. I just, I bought the shirt from yeah. their website. So you so. can get our, just go <laughs> and find us on bigheadsmedia.com. You can buy yeah. All the merchandise there. I'll try to remember to tweet it, or Bethany will try to remember to tweet yeah, the link yeah. so that you can just jump yeah. straight on there. You can follow the show at um, Body Count Pod on both Instagram and on Twitter. Twitter, and then you can find Bethany. Where do we find you? You can find me on Instagram at Bethany R N. 24 and then on twitter you can find me at bethany skeleton five that's the number five that's it awesome um i am jessica b manor on twitter and instagram i attempted to deactivate my instagram and then i realized because of this podcast i actually probably need to have it it is on private now so sorry guys you do have to request to follow me i just Everybody knows how much I dislike Instagram. I'm a Twitter person. Just I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. I'm not gonna... If I'm going to be a whore, I'm going to do it honestly. <laughs> but you're only being a whore to one platform, and that's not a true whore. If you're going to be a whore, be a whore to all platforms. I hate all platforms. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Twitter is I'm all I sorry, do. I don't know what I'm talking about. I really don't. Too much. Twitter's the only place I live. Nobody bothers me outside of my DMs, at least on Twitter. Um, you can DM me at Twitter. I'll deal with any questions, anything that you have, any suggestions. You can also email me at Jessica Manor at bodycountpod.com. Um, awesome. Other than that, I think that finishes us up this yes. week. Keep saying 
Go outside. Go for a walk. Don't kill your husband or your children if you have any. Don't kill yeah, yourself. Don't be on. Snap. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, like, seriously, just hang in there. We're gonna make it through. And but if listen you do to end up. up on Snap. Make sure to mention how much you love the podcast and yes, your TV please. interview for Oxygen. We'll appreciate it. <laughs> oh my God. We'll give you a shout out, even though it might not be the biggest. We'll still recognize you. You recognize us. We recognize you. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big wink. <laughs> All right, everybody that's going to do it for us this week we'll be back next week hopefully yes. with peter the great let's all keep our fingers crossed that i stop being no, lazy i believe there. chop 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 <laughs> all right everybody stay safe stay yes safe. stay safe we, we love, love you, you. Mm-hmm. We love you. Bye. bye 